In this video, I will explain what the purpose is of the Web3.js library and how to use it. Please note, this video is made in August 2017. At this moment, the Web3.js library version 1.0.0 is in beta. This video is not about version 1.0.0. To communicate with an Ethereum node or transact with a smart contract deployed on the blockchain from inside a JavaScript or web application, you use the Web3.js library. Under the hood, the Web3.js library communicates with an Ethereum node through JSON RPC calls. The Ethereum node must expose its RPC layer. More information about RPC layer can be found at this YouTube movie. The Web3.js API version 0.x.x can be found at this location. The Web3.js API version 1.0 can be found at this location. This documentation is work in progress and Web3.js 1.0 is not yet released. It is still in beta. This is the Web3.js GitHub page. If I click the releases link, you can see it is in beta. And the 0.19.0 is the latest release. The MetaMask extension exposes the Web3 API by an injected Web3 object, which you can access via JavaScript. The extension does not support most synchronous Web3 API methods. Make your method calls asynchronous. As you can see, I have installed MetaMask. If you install the MetaMask extension, it will inject a Web3 object, as you can see over here. If I disable MetaMask, the MetaMask extension is now disabled, and as you can see, there is no Web3 object injected. This is the Web3.js getBalance method, and this method is made asynchronous by using a callback function. This is the Web3 JavaScript API web page. Here you can find how to use the getBalance method. By using a callback function, you make this method asynchronous. If you don't use a callback method, it is synchronous. Here's another example. By using a callback function, you make this method asynchronous. More information about MetaMask using Web3 API can be found at this location. To use the Web3.js library in your web application, download the library from this location. In the distribution folder, you will find the files web 3 lite minifyjs and web 3 minifyjs The file web 3 minifyjs contains the big number module and the web 3 lightminifyjs does not. If you do not know which one to choose, then use the web3.minify.js. I'm at the web3.js GitHub page. I'm selecting the link releases. I'm not choosing the beta version. Pressing the next button. So here is the release 0.19.0. I'm clicking this link. This is the distribution folder. And you see these files. But I recommend that you use this file, the web3.minify.js. I've created a web page with web3.js API code examples. If applicable, I use the asynchronous method calls. This is the web page with the web3 code examples. If I refresh the page, it detects that the Rinkaby network is selected. Here you see Rinkaby. If I switch it to, for example, Robston, it detects that you have switched to the Robston network. So you see Coinbase is null. Let's log in. This is my account. If I refresh this page, as you can see, it has found a Coinbase account. If I switch this account to, for example, this one, 0x35, refresh this page, 
as you can see, 0x35. Just look at the code examples to see how it works. I have not implemented all Web3 methods. I have created a demonstration Ethereum DEP for educational purpose. The web interface can be found at this location. And the Solidity contract can be found at this location. The demo contract. The main purpose of this step is to learn how to use the Web3.js API version 0.x.x and how to interact with a deployed smart contract. How to set up the demonstration Ethereum DEP. Download and deploy the demo contract Solidity file on any test network, for example, Test RPC, Robson, Rinkaby, or your own private Ethereum node. After you have deployed the contract, Save your contract address, you will need it later. Download and install the demo app.html file on your web server. Download and install the web3.minify.js file on your web server. I've already shown you where you can find this file. Modify the path to web3.minify.js in demo app.html. And last, modify the contract address in demo app.html file. I will show you the last two steps. This is a demo dev.html file. If I look at the source code, you have to change this path to your web3.minify.js file. In this line, you have to replace this contract address with your contract address. That's this contract address. By hard coding your contract address, you don't need to specify your contract address in this form field. How to use the demonstration Ethereum DEP? Use a test network, have a test account with enough ethers to experiment with, and the demonstration DEP also works well with MetaMask. I will now demonstrate what you can do with this DEP. Please note this DEP is made for educational purpose only. This DEP detects which network you are using. It displays the latest block information, as you can see over here and also all the transactions within this block. So at this moment, we are now using the Rinkeby network. Let's switch to another network. Let's select the main Ethereum network because you will see more information. So I switch to the main Ethereum network. It has detected it. And here it displays the block information and all the transactions within this block. Let's switch back to Rinkeby test network because that is where I have deployed my smart contract. As you can see over here, it didn't find any accounts because I'm logged out. As you can see over here, this field is empty. I'm now logging in. As you can see over here, it has detected an account, 35D, 35D. If I switch to another account, let's say this one, watch this field when I select a new account. it detects that I have switched account. As you can see over here, it will always display the latest block information and the accompanied transactions belonging to this block. These are all setters for this contract. So here you can make a deposit, you can make a withdrawal, you can set the stored value, you can increase the stored value, and you can set the stored text. And here below are the getters. Get stored text, get balance, get stored value, and show hello. So let's see what the values are at this moment. So the get stored text is QQ. Get balance is 0.2 ethers. Get stored value is three. And show hello is Ni Hao. Let's check my account. I have selected account with enough eaters. That's correct. I'm entering value four. Press the store button. Press the submit button. So over here, you will see the message waiting for transaction to be mined.
and here is the transaction receipt object. Press the button get stored value, it displays the value 4. Let's see what the stored text is now. QQ, all right, let's type another text. Hello, press the store button, press the submit button. I'm now waiting for the transaction to be mined. So the transaction is now mined. Let's check my store text. Press this button, get store text. You will see hello. I can increase this store value by one. If I increase it with one, it will become five. Press the increase button. Wait for the transaction to be mined. It is mined. Let's press this button. It is five. I can use this method to transfer Ether to this state variable and it also logs the event. At this moment, I have now 28.99 Ether in this account. Let's deposit 5 Ether in that variable. But let's check the balance for that account. It has 0 0.2 Ethers, so let's deposit 5 Ethers. Press this button. So my current account has 28.99 ethers. Press the submit button. Waiting for the transaction to be mined. The code is also watching the event. The amount deposited is 5 ethers. The new balance will be 5.2 ethers. Here's my event result. Let's check my balance. It has subtracted at least 5 ethers from this account. Let's check the balance. As you can see, 5.2 ethers. The current balance is 4.2 ethers. So let's withdraw one ether. My current balance is 24.989 I'm entering one ether I'm pressing the withdraw button press the submit button waiting for the transaction to be mined I'm also logging the event when the withdraw method is called the amount withdraw is one ether and my current balance is now 3.2 ether my balance is here 25.988 ethers, and that's correct. I've now demonstrated how this web interface interacts with this smart contract. I've also shown you the events, how you can deposit and withdraw amounts using these two methods, and how these getters and setters are used. This is all done in this single web page. I'm not going to explain how this code works line by line. It should be simple to understand. So what I'm now going to demonstrate is the following. I'm now going to disable MetaMask. I've disabled MetaMask. I'm now going to start my Ethereum node. This Ethereum node is connected to the Rinkeby test network. So let's refresh the screen. It has found the Rinkeby test network and it now displays the latest block information. It also detected this account. Let's see the get stored text. It's still hello because my Ethereum node is also connected to the Rinkeby test network. So there's the balance, the stored value, and this is show hello. Let's see what happens if I change the stored value. The get stored value is 5. Let's change it to 1. And press the store button. It says authentication needed, and that's correct. I'm now going to unlock my account. 
My account is now unlocked. Press the store button. The transaction is being mined. Here's the transaction received object. If I press the get stored value, it should show one. Let's see what happens when I stop my Ethereum node. As you can see, it automatically detects that it can't find any Ethereum node. What I have demonstrated is all done in one single web page. By looking at the code, you can see how it is done. I have created two versions of the demo app.html file, a version using callbacks, not very readable because of using callback trees. For educational purpose, you can find this version at this location, but don't use it. The original code has been refactored by using JavaScript promises. The demo app.html file uses vanilla JavaScript using the web3.js library. All code, meaning JavaScript, HTML, and cascading style sheets can be found in this single web page. This is the original code demo depth version 0.1. If you look at this method, watch block info. This is the callback tree. As you can see, it's very difficult to read. And this is a new version, the same watch block info method. And this is what it looks like now. I'm using JavaScript promises. So here are some warnings. The demo app.html file does not work with the web3.js version 1.0.0 and upwards. The web3.js library version 1.0.0 has many changes. The demo app.html will soon be obsolete. And the last warning is use the demonstration Ethereum dev on the test environment. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.